Hey, Andy. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. It's Thank good to you have you. so much. Are you ready for your 73 questions? Let's do it. All right. So let's get started. What is your name? My name is Martin Rakowski, and uh, I'm a neurosurgeon. All right. And how many years have you been practicing? I'm entering my third year, actually. So I did seven years of training in my third year now. Yeah. Where did you go to undergrad? I went to Brown. And medical school? UCLA. Go Bruins. Ah. Did you take any gap years before going to med school? I did. Um, I took one year off after college, uh, and I did clinical research. Gotcha. So I know it's been a bit, but do you remember what was your favorite part of medical school? Oh, probably the chance to really surround myself with people that I, I wanted to emulate, you know, and feel like I was, uh, I was finally working towards being a doctor. Great answer. So what specialty did you think you were going to go into on your first day of med school? So I kind of knew it was going to be neurosurgery. I was a little weird that way, but, but I knew in fifth grade, so it was a long time coming. Were there any specialties you immediately said, absolutely not for me? Ooh, um, probably pediatrics. Um, I just felt like kind of the, the social aspects of dealing with families and, you know, and other doctors, it's, it's a little complicated sometimes, and sick kids are, are hard to treat. So I, I knew pretty early on I wanted to do adult medicine. Gotcha. So you said you knew from the gate you wanted to go into neurosurgery. So what first made you fall in love with it? I think for me it was, it was probably the anatomy. I think the brain is beautiful and there's just no other organ like it. Great answer. Spoken like a true neurosurgeon. <laughs> so, how long does your training take after med school for those who want to be in your shoes one day? So most residencies are seven years now, um, and so you can count on at least seven years of primary training and then about a year or two of fellowship depending on what you want to go into. So are there any subspecialties that take just as long as you uh, for post-med school training? Well, the truth is, you know, any of the subspecialties you want to go to in medicine, you know, even if you do internal medicine for three years, you're looking at at least three years of fellowship afterwards for a lot of the subspecialties. So, you know, chances are if you want to be a subspecialist, you're going to spend a long time training and you just kind of embrace the challenge. <sighs> All right. And did you ever consider any other degrees like an MBA or an MPH? I kind of knew that I was in for a long haul with my training in neurosurgery, so I figured, you know what, let's just focus right now on, on getting through training, and, and that's kind of where I focused. Definitely makes sense. So, talking more about neurosurgery, what would you say is the most unique part of your specialty? I think, um, you know, just, just the opportunity to take people through what typically is, you know, one of the biggest days of their life. Um, I specialize specifically in brain tumors, and so obviously patients are oftentimes really scared and nervous, and I think being able to counsel them through that, take them through an operation, and then treat them afterwards, is, it's a really unique opportunity. Well said. And now, I always give physicians the chance to kind of be a car salesman about their specialty and sell it. So why should someone choose your specialty? Well, gosh, I think that's an easy question because I love what I do, but I think if you, um, if you love the challenge of really complex you know, and technical operations and kind of a difficult patient population in terms of people who are really sick and kind of embracing the challenge of you know, really, really difficult disease processes, um, I think it's a great way to go. Well then flip it around, be a devil's advocate. Why should someone not choose your specialty? Ooh, it's probably not a great lifestyle specialty. I think that's you know, a, a worthy consideration before you choose something, but it's, it's a lot of work. Okay. Oh, fun question. Are there any stereotypes of your specialty? Oh, there's so many. Too many to count. Um, arrogant, hubristic, uh, demanding, aggressive, but also some good ones. You know, typically intelligent, driven, focused, ambitious. So there's a balance. Are they true? Mostly, yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the good and the bad. All right. Well, you work in a medical or a academic medical institution. So what is your go-to question to ask your residents? Ooh, it's usually neuroanatomy. So if we're in the middle of a case and I point out something that I think is cool, I'd like to know if they know, you know, kind of what we're looking at. Okay. I could maybe answer some now that I'm done with neuro. Don't, that's not an invitation to ask me one, but <laughs> <laughs> um, what does an average day for you look like? So it depends a little bit on if I'm in the OR versus um, seeing patients in clinic. Um, so usually my clinics are on Mondays. I'll do a full day where I evaluate patients for surgery or see consults. Um, if it's a day in the OR, um, then I, you know, it could be any sort of length of time and complexity of operations. Some things I do are very simple. An hour or two, some things take me 12 hours plus. 
How many patients do you see on an average day? Boy, um, in clinic, probably somewhere between 10 and 20. Um, if it's not a clinic day, you know, I'll round on maybe 10 inpatients. Okay. What is the most amount of patients you've seen in a day? Oh, probably back when I was a resident, rounding on a weekend, I think 40 or 50. Oh, gosh. Oh, what is the hardest procedure you do? Oh, boy. Um, well, they're all challenging in their own ways. Um, but one of my specialties is in skull base, and so I operate in the area of the brain where it kind of sits right on the skull, where a lot of the really important neurovascular structures are. So any tumors that arise from that area are typically very difficult to access and difficult to remove. They can wrap themselves around a lot of important structures, and so that, that makes for a long day. What is the most common procedure you do? Hmm. Probably removing a primary brain tumor. Okay. And what is the most memorable case you've encountered so far? Probably a four-year-old that I operated on. I don't typically do pediatrics, um, but there was a four-year-old who was actually losing vision and endocrine function, and, uh, and so having to operate on her was, um, that was a challenge. That was a little scary, but, but things went well, and she's doing really well now. I'm sure. Well, speaking of challenges, what would you say is the toughest part of your job? Probably the emotional toll it takes. You know, I treat a lot of cancer patients, and seeing people suffer is really, really difficult. But knowing that you can help them and doing what you can to try to slow that down, you know, and help people through it. Um, it's difficult, but very rewarding. Well, on a rewarding note, next question is, what is the most rewarding part of your job? Oh, it's, it's by far seeing patients post-op. When they do well and, you know, a surgery's gone well and you've taken a tumor out and they kind of have that new outlook on life and they've gotten through that really scary day, that's, that's a very rewarding feeling. How many hours do you work in an average week? Boy, that can range, honestly. A good week is maybe 50 or 60. A rough week is 100 plus. Oof, jeez. Well, on that note, how, what time do you normally wake up? It's not so bad now when I was a resident, it was pretty early, but these days about six o'clock. What time do you normally leave the hospital? Mm, anywhere from six to midnight. Oh, how many hours of sleep are you typically working on? Probably about six. I wish it was more. <laughs> and how many hours of sleep are you working on right now? About six. Okay. It's a good day. Uh, do you have to take call at all? I do. I do. I take it uh, usually about a week at a time, once every two months or so. Okay. You want to head outside, take a walk? Sure. It's nice out. Finally getting some of that uh, autumn feeling as much as autumn can feel in Georgia. Exactly. I try to spend as much time outside as I can. Being in the hospital all the time. It's nice to be outdoors. All right. Well, let me focus on not dropping the camera walking down these stairs. Yeah, I'm not looking for another patient today. Yeah, I don't want to be a patient today either. <laughs> I might get pimped on the way to the OR. <laughs> as soon as you tell them you're a med student, I was told by an ER doc to read my own scans, so not, not a great time. <laughs> but, oh, continuing on, are you a night or day person? Night owl. Not so good for being a surgeon, but I always have been. How long does it take for you to chart at the end of your day? Usually about a couple hours. Yeah. And wholesome question. Who are you most thankful for on your care team? Oh, my residents. They're really an extension of everything I do, and I love teaching them, but I'm also grateful for all the hard work and grunt work that they do for me. Now, another funny question. What is the funniest thing you've seen in a patient chart? You know, without violating HIPAA, of course. Hmm. That's a good one. You know, there's not too much humor in neurosurgery, so it's hard to think of an example. But, but uh, you know, every now and then, I guess I'll have someone referred to me for something that was just a complete misdiagnosis. So it's nice to be able to tell someone, you know what you thought was going to be really serious? Actually, it's not a big deal at all. Yeah. Sometimes we have those happy stories. Uh, what is the most common medical advice you give to your patients? Take a deep breath and um, remember that the body has an amazing ability to heal itself. So. Sometimes my job is just to rearrange the parts, but it's amazing what the body can do on its own. Okay. All right. So we've talked a lot about your life inside the hospital. So how about life when you clock out? So what is your favorite thing to do when you are not working? Definitely spending time outside. I love to camp. I love to backpack. Um, traveling. If I'm outdoors, I'm in my happy spot. Oh, do you have a significant other? I do. I have a wife and, uh, and actually a nine-month-old son. Nice. And, uh, well, 
for those of you guys who have been on the channel for a little bit, you recognize the last name is kind of familiar. So, you're married to a neurologist. I am, my better half. How do you balance two demanding physician work schedules when starting a family? You know, it's, it's a lot of outsourcing. We were lucky enough to have our families relocate with us when we uh, moved out here. And I think having grandparents in the picture, especially with the young one, it's a life changer. Well said. On that note, does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? All the time. It's usually rashes, um, headaches, bumps on the head. Uh, a lot of my friends will call me when their kids, you know, fall and hit their head. And thankfully, it's almost never serious. What's the weirdest question a family friend has ever asked you? Probably about a mole, thinking it was something cancerous. And, you know, it, it wasn't. <laughs> Any pets? We do. We have uh, one dog, a, a corgi. She's a handful. <laughs> Favorite animal, not a dog or cat? Probably fish, if that's not weird. I used to work in an aquarium uh, when I was in high school, and uh, that was a really fun job. Huh, interesting. If you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Hmm, probably Eugene O'Neill, my favorite playwright. And what would you guys be eating? Oh, probably red meat. Favorite dish to eat? It's a toss-up between a steak and sushi. Coffee, tea, or soda? Coffee, and lots of it. My favorite question of the bunch, because every physician gives me a different answer. How much water should you be drinking every day? Oh, way more than I do. At least a couple liters. I'm, I'm lucky if I get a glass in some days. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true surgeon. <laughs> uh, favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if you have one? Ooh, is it fair to say I don't have one? I try to bring my food. Yeah, that's fair enough to say. What's your favorite healthy snack? Trail mix. Favorite guilty snack or cheat meal? Mm, chocolate. Pineapple and pizza, yes or no? I'm a Californian, so yes. Oof, the internet won't, won't take too kindly to that one. <laughs> uh, any artistic hobbies you keep up with? Yeah, I, I don't do it so much now, but I used to be a, a pretty busy writer. Um, so I love short stories, and, and uh, I was working on a novel for a while. That's, that's been dormant, but hoping to pick that up again soon. Favorite music to listen to in the OR? Ooh, I'm like my wife that way. I, I love Deep House. Something that kind of gets you in a trance. Ooh. Yeah. One random task you wish you could be better at? Mm -hmm. Time management. What's the best way that you relax after a long day? Oh, probably doing this. Grabbing a cup of coffee or sometimes a glass of red wine and just taking a deep breath. It's beautiful out here. Night in or go out on the town kind of person? Ooh. Used to be going out, but probably night in these days. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or extrovert? Introvert. And would you say that personality trait is a factor in you choosing your specialty? I think so. I think so. Um, although it is important to say that, you know, there are, just like any other specialty, there are a wide variety of personalities in neurosurgery. Um, I'd say people tend to be introverted, but there are definitely some extroverts in my field as well. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end. Only got a few more questions, but these are more reflective questions, which is perfect, sitting on a beautiful dock like this. Oh, first one, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up as a kid? I hoped it was going to be a neurosurgeon, but you never know. It took a lot of work to get here, um, but it's, it was definitely worth the, uh, all the effort and the work. And I know you've been neurosurgery the whole way, but is there a different specialty you think you could have done? Boy, you know, honestly, if I wasn't a neurosurgeon, I don't think I'd be in medicine. I, I love what I do, and it's, it's really the way that I have always imagined my life, you know, always imagined my life to be. Well, speaking of wouldn't be in medicine, if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Probably would go either into radio or be a backpacking instructor. Wow, those are two very different career <laughs> fields. Were there any times you doubted you would make it as a doctor? And especially in neurosurgery, I can imagine that the road is not easy. If I'm being honest, plenty of times, yeah. It, it takes a lot of grit and a lot of resilience. Um, and I think it's easy to doubt yourself. You know, training is an incredibly difficult process and you know, no one's born a neurosurgeon. You know, we, we go through a really intense training because we have a really intense job. Um, and so I think it's normal to have some self-doubt, but to some extent you have to just kind of fake it till you make it and keep that confidence up and, and you can reach your goals. Well said. So if you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? Access to care. Very well said. And I have a lot of friends that are interested in neurosurgery. So what can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into the specialty? 
Great question. Find a mentor. Mentorship is the most important thing. It, it got me through those really difficult times and I think finding someone that you want to emulate and someone who reminds you maybe of who you want to be kind of when you're in their position, that's priceless. How, if you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences that got you to where you are right now? I don't think so. No regrets. I think that's the same answer with a lot of physicians, which is good and very comforting to hear. And finally, we made it. Question 73. What would you say to the aspiring neurosurgeon right now? I would say, you know, commit to your dream, push through the hard work, and, uh, and don't be afraid to fail. You know, it's, it's a difficult specialty, but when you reach the end, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely worth it. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rakowski. Mr. Dr. Rakowski. My pleasure. That is all I have for you. So, Thanks, Andy. Uh, thank you so much. And Appreciate thank it. you for sharing your advice. Anytime.